So um, I'm actually wearing a lot of hats uh, in this workshop. So uh, I'm, I work at APC, which is part of the University of Edinburgh, but I'm also um, publicity chair for the HBC certification forum. And I'm also co-chair of the outreach committee of the SIG HBC education chapter. And I'll try to go very quickly through the slides, uh, which were put together by Julie and David, uh, who leads the content committee of the chapter. Uh, and the reason I will just go over them very quick is because Julie went over them in quite a lot of detail on Monday. And also because Christian, who is going to talk next, will actually address many of the points raised uh, in this presentation. So um, here I go. So a, a brief introduction to the chapter. It's one of the ACM um, special interest um, groups. Uh, at the moment, it consists of six different uh, committees. Um, that includes workshop committee, uh, which is tasked with organizing a variety of events, mostly in person, but also virtual. Until now, those events were happening mostly in the US and Europe, but we are hoping to expand into the Asia Pacific region as well. So if any of you would like to be involved, please do let me know. Then we have the Computational Science Education Committee, um, Education Content Committee, which is the most relevant uh, in this context, and I will come back to that later. Uh, then there is the Outreach Committee, which is really um, engaging with the HBC community as a whole, um, organizing a variety of events, uh, webinars, uh, posting blogs, and so on. And again, if any of you would like to share what you're doing, please do let me know. And then we have the K-12 committee and the system professional committee. Both of them are fairly new and are just really getting started. Um, and we're looking for new members for all of those working groups. So please do get in touch if you're interested. We have been around for a number of years now. So there is a, a number of resources on our websites, including different videos, links to different education materials, blog, discussion forums, and, and so on. So feel free uh, to check it out. And now coming back to the actual topic of this presentation, so the collaboration between the, the Education Content Committee um, and the HBC Certification Forum. Um, so how to bring those two communities together? There's uh, maybe not so much um, a lot of overlap between what the two groups are trying to do, but they definitely complement each other. Uh, in, in a way, both of them are focused on informal learning and just making it easier for learners to find the information that they need to know to find a, uh, to access the materials uh, that will let them learn specific set of skills. And Education Content Committee over the last couple of years went through a lot of different um, content. So that they sourced materials from uh, many different HPC centers around the world. And they tried to catalog them uh, in a meaningful way. So they're actually still looking for um, contributions from other people. They tried to crowdsource evaluation of, of usefulness of different materials, how to properly tag them, how to properly categorize them, and to make them searchable and easy to navigate. And in a way, this is where the HP certification forum can come in. Uh, because the forum is more focused about defining the skills and, and then hopefully mapping them onto the already existing materials. And, and they're also trying to crowdsource a, a number of uh, questions that will um, allow the, the assessment and will make the, the whole examination process much easier. So uh, both the two things are really linked with each other uh, and, and we're hoping to uh, collaborate a lot more. But the actual uh, work started roughly in autumn last year. Uh, Julian gave a, a webinar to the committee members, um, I think in October. And then in November, we had an informal meeting at SC where we we're trying to decide how to proceed and how to take things forward. In the end, we decided to select one skill group and go through the whole process of making sure that both the high level and low level um, skills are defined uh, properly and in a comprehensive way, and then trying to create the assessment that will match those skills. Um, and the uh, use one B skill, which is cluster operating system has been selected. Um, the committee went through the descriptions and made sure that they actually make sense. And then um, they moved on to building a potential exam question. So at some point, Julie and David sat down and tried to submit a question using the, the web interface already created by the forum. 
And although they were really uh, happy that the whole process was straightforward, they were slightly concerned um, that all they got um, after submitting a question was, thank you for submitting your questions. So they, they were really concerned about the fact that it's not really clear what sort of questions already exist. Um, it's not clear what types of question can even be asked and what, how those questions would appear to the students or the, the person taking the, the exam afterwards. So there was no preview option. And finally, what was the most concerning for them was the fact that they were allowed to create those questions without any vetting process. So it seemed to them like anyone um, can just create a question and, and it wasn't clear whether those questions are being verified in any ways. Uh, so the, the next five or six slides are really giving an example of what other platforms are using. So what sort of question format and how they're being autograded. So those platforms are Open edX, um, Socrative, um, FutureLearn and Kuya. And, and all of those um, tools were actually used uh, by different people. So we have a fair amount of experience in using them. Um, and you can look at the slides later on. And another question that's been raised is how to ask more detailed questions. So how, how to craft problems that would accept an autograde expressions. And I think that that's something that Christian is going to talk about later. So some um, few other questions that the chapter and, and the committee would like to know is um, really what forms of problems um, should be included for the, the person taking the, the examination to, to show the mastery that they actually understand and know the content. What sort of uh, questions hiring managers are concerned about? Where all of those questions and examination problems leave? Uh, and finally, what is the, the process of getting permission to submit a question? Um, and, you know, there are many other questions around uh, the, the actual access and, and verification uh, of the question and how the examination process will look like. But all of that is actually going to be addressed uh, in the next presentation. So I'll just wrap it up here. If there are any questions about the chapter, uh, I'm happy to take them. Uh, the questions about the actual examination, this collaboration will probably have to wait until after the next presentation, as many of those questions and the concerns are going to be answered in it.